you ever been to the Columbia Gorge? It's only a couple miles away from us here in Sandy, and it's a very different place. One thing, it's extremely rich in geology. You can see the different layers of the Columbia flood basalts, and it was carved out by the Missoula floods, this giant wall of water about 14 to 18,000 years ago that carved out this gorge. The other thing, when you go there, the first thing you might notice is it's extremely windy. In fact, it's only a few miles away, but it is much more windy than we have here in Sandy. Well, what exactly is wind? And in this video, we're <laughs> going to be seeing what is wind and how does it relate to air pressure. Well, in particular, we're going to be doing three different things. The first thing we're going to be doing is explaining the relationship between air pressure and the direction of the winds. After that, we're going to identify how Earth's spin changes that direction of the winds and kind of tweaks it turned it a little bit. And then we're going to be looking and identifying local patterns. So you can maybe explain why the Columbia Gorge may have more wind or why Sandy might have specific winds. So we're going to be writing those down. We're going to be looking for those three things throughout this video. Well, to look at winds, we kind of have to go back to convection. And you can watch the previous video there and understand convection maybe a little bit more. Um, convection really is the simple process of a liquid or gas uh, warming up, and when it warms up, it expands, and that expansion makes it lower, de lower density, and so it rises up. And when it cools down, it shrinks and becomes more dense and then falls back down, and that process makes a loop, and sometimes we like to call that a convection cell, and that's one full circle from heat all the way up to cold, and then it circles around. Well, when we're looking at weather, instead of simply thinking of hot and cold, we like to think of it as high pressure and low pressure. <clears throat> now, you can think of it this way. When the air is moving up at the hot spot, that air is moving away from you. And if you were standing there, you wouldn't feel as much air pushing down on you. So we could say that is a lower pressure. Warmer temperatures make lower pressures. On the other hand, when the air is pushing down on you, when it's coming down and it's shrinking and sinking, it's higher pressures. So, we could think of convection, maybe if we don't want to look at temperature, but pressure, we could think of it as Low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, high pressure. Well, it's fine when you're rising up and down, when you can see the different spots. But in between that, you will feel that air is moving from the high pressure to the low pressure. It's being pushed right to it, especially down here on the surface. That air moving towards low pressure is what we call winds. And they move from high pressure to low pressure. So. Well, we can look at the Earth and we can see specific spots on our planet that are going to get warmer and colder. In climate, we saw that the equator is getting a lot more sunlight and so it is warmer than our poles. So we can think of that as a giant convection cell. We could have low pressure at the equator where it's going to rise up. It's going to travel up towards the poles where it's going to be at a high pressure, sink back down and winds that are going to go south towards the equator. If you're on the south, southern horizon, uh, southern, southern hemisphere, it's going to be flipped and it's going to go the other direction. Well, unfortunately though, this airflow from the pole all the way up to the equator doesn't make it the entire length. Convection isn't strong enough to make it that full way. Instead, it only makes it about 30 degrees on our planet. And if you go from the equator all the way up to the pole, it's about 90 degrees. So, we can only get about three convection cells. And we call those convection cells on our planet belts, pressure belts, because they form similar pressures. Remember, high pressures and low pressures. And they circle our entire globe, and they play a really large part of looking into our weather. You can see next to the equator, we have what we'd call Hadley cells. Above it, we have the mid-latitude cell, and then the upper one is the polar. And they happen at about 30 and uh, 60 degrees, and of course, 90 is the pole. You can go the same for the southern hemisphere. Well, those winds are going to have very specific directions. Now, when you're looking at it, I like to think of it as the right-hand rule, right? So, if you put your thumb in the direction that the air is moving, so, in a low-pressure zone, that air is moving up, the winds are going to be your fingers, and they're going to curve around. And so, in a low-pressure zone, the air is going to move counterclockwise. In a high pressure zone, the air is moving down, so we can stick our thumb down, and the air is going to move around it this direction clockwise. It's going to spin around. 
So you can see, if it's low pressure, I'm sorry, high pressure, it's going to go clockwise, high pressure, counterclockwise. Now, what's making that spin? I mean, it's happening. We can see it there. You can kind of see those different cells, what direction their wind is going to be moving. The reason that it's having that direction is because of the Coriolis effect. And really, the Coriolis effect is a really fancy way of saying that the Earth is spinning. So as the Earth spins and moves around, it moves the winds as it goes to the right, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere. If you're in the South, it's going to move it to the left. It's going to be the opposite. In fact, we have the left-hand rule. It's kind of the same, too. If you've ever been on a merry-go-round, you could try this sometime and have a partner sit across from you and roll a ball as it spins around. You'll see that to the outside observer, that ball is going to rotate around. And that's from the spinning of the merry-go-round. The wind is the same thing. The earth spins and the wind gets bent to the right and the north and to the south and to the left. So, we can have basic weather patterns. So as a high pressure zone comes in, that wind is going to move towards the lower pressure, but it's going to curve away clockwise. And vice versa, when the low pressure moves in and the high pressure is off the coast maybe, that wind is going to move towards uh, towards the low, so it's going to move towards us, and it's going to be going in a counterclockwise. So generally, when you have major weather patterns, that's what you're going to see. Now, that's not always the case for very specific spots on our, on our planet. In fact, in different locations around our planet, you might find unique and local effects of winds. Well, let me give you a really good example. If you go to the beach, you might notice a trend. When you get there during the day, the wind will blow from the ocean towards the land. And at night, in the evening, the wind almost flips, and it'll blow from the land back out to the ocean. Now, it's not that the, night has, the wind has to like leave before nighttime or anything like that. What actually happens is the land actually uh, conducts heat better than water. So it actually absorbs heat very quickly, and is able to give it back, and so the land heats up faster than the water. Well, remember on convection, when you warm something up, you get a low pressure, and when you don't warm it up quite as fast, it's a higher pressure, and so wind is going to blow towards the low pressure and blow on shore. So during the day, that wind is blowing on shore at the beach. At night, it flips because uh, water doesn't give up heat as much, so it's trapped all that heat all day. The land is just giving it up, and so the, uh, it is now a lower pressure on the offshore, and the, uh, the high pressure pushes the winds off the ocean. So you might notice very unique winds when you get to the beach. And that's all because of convection and the high pressures and low pressures. Also here in Sandy you might notice something. Or as you get closer to the mountain. During the day the wind might blow up the mountain. And during the night the wind will blow down the mountain. That flipping is also convection. It happens to do that the lowlands, like here in Sandy, they heat up faster than a higher mountain. That makes sense. The higher you go, the colder it gets. Well, it also flips longer because lowlands also keep heat longer. So during the day, they're warm faster, so it's a low pressure in the, down in the lowlands and it pushes it up for, towards the higher pressure up a mountain. And vice versa, during the nighttime, it's warmer, and so it's a low pressure that way and a high pressure on the mountain. I'm sorry, yep, yeah, so it's pushing it down. It all depends on the warmth that's driving high pressures and low pressures. Well, what did we do in this video? Well, actually we looked at three things. The first thing we looked at is the relationship between air pressure and the direction of winds. And we saw that air pressure really is determined by convection. Where it's warmer, the air is going to move up and be a low pressure, and where it's colder, the air is going to be moved down and form a high pressure. And all the wind is, is that well, air moving from the high pressure to the low pressure. And so the direction of the wind, that air wind always blows from high pressure to low pressure. We also saw that the Earth's spin changes the direction of the wind. So as that wind is blowing from the high pressure to low pressure, the spin is turning it. If you're down here, in the, if you're up here in the North of America, that we use the right hand rule. That if the air is moving up at a low pressure, it'll spin it to the counterclockwise, and if it's on a high pressure, it'll spin it clockwise. We also looked at local patterns of wind, and it still is going to follow high pressure and low pressure. That we saw that uh, valleys, 
conduct heat and as long as shorelines very well and so they are going to absorb heat and form low pressures during the day and so that wind will blow towards them and at night mountains are become a high pressure and push the wind back down and the ocean actually absorbs heat and so the wind will blow back out to the ocean at night and so local patterns are all still determined about high pressure and low pressure ultimately really with wind what you should be able to see is that in convection it, that wind is always going to blow from high pressure to low pressure so let me remind you how these videos work if I went too fast or I said something that you didn't quite get you can always go back and watch it again you can pause it, rewind it, take a break and come back and see it again. But regardless, always remember to just keep moving forward.